Please be seated. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome graduates, family and friends, administration, faculty and staff to our summer 2018 fitting ceremony. My name is Aya Tolmus Lesh and I'm Dean of the School of Nursing. First of all, I want to thank the graduates for our lovely pictures here of you. As a tradition in the School of Nursing, the graduates present us with a picture for our halls and we go all the way back to 1975 when the school was started and have pictures of all of our graduates. Now that we've expanded to regional centers, those uh, pictures also hang in our regional center. So please come back when you um, are in your professional practice and visit us, let us know how you do, and come and visit your picture as well. This ceremony recognizes entry into the profession of nursing at the baccalaureate level. There are several pathways in the School of Nursing for receiving your BSN in nursing, but they all involve rigorous study and over 120 units of uh, coursework in order to achieve your baccalaureate degree. Today our graduates represent a number of different pathways into nursing. Entry level master students have a degree in another field and receive their BSN or entry into nursing practice on their way to their master's degree and enroll as an advanced practice nurse. Today is an important step in their progression towards that goal their ultimate goal of becoming a nurse practitioner or a clinical nurse specialist or a nurse educator or administrator. So if you could please recognize our BSN graduates from APU's entry-level master's program from San Bernardino, if you could stand, from San Diego, if you could stand, and Registered nurses who have completed their nursing education at a community college and returned to college for their RN to BSN degree, either online or in one of our regional campuses, are also here today. Now, we usually do not have summer cohorts graduating, but we do have um, two online registered nurses who are getting their BSN. So we're going to recognize you. If you don't mind standing up, we can also applaud you as well. And then we also recognize our graduates who have transferred from a community college and have entered our BSN transfer program. Uh, these are either uh, community college graduates who have completed their prerequisites at a junior college or they are LVNs who may have completed their LVN training in various programs and then also have come back and completed their prerequisites for nursing. So we have programs loaded, located in Mor Monrovia, Azusa. If you could please stand. LVN program in Monrovia, Azusa. <laughs> Do we have any uh, Inland Empire graduates today? And if, if we could have those who are at the 2 plus 2 program in the High Desert stand. Congratulations to all of you, and I would also like to extend a very special thank you to the family and friends that are here today to celebrate with you and who have supported you throughout your journey. Only you know the many ways they've contributed to your success today. So if you could turn around and just applaud all your family and friends that are here. And say Entering into a new profession, particularly one as complex as nursing, requires mentors who will guide you through the process, sharing with you from their knowledge and expertise gained over many years of practice. Please join me in recognizing your faculty who have given generously of their time to prepare you for practice in the profession and with true dedication have supported you throughout your journey. If our faculty could please stand, we can recognize you. And you are 
also surrounded by wonderful staff who support the entire educational process from admission to graduation, who have walked beside you through your journey, and who are here as well today, not only helping us organize this pinning ceremony, but also to support you in your graduation as well. If our staff who are present in the room could please stand, and if everyone could acknowledge their contribution to your success. I suspect we have a lot of them going outside. They're wandering around as well. Pinning, the pinning ceremony is a long-standing tradition in nursing and symbolic of multiple dimensions associated with professional practice. One of those dimensions is the process of being pinned. The pin designates membership in the profession, completion of the requirements for membership and competence to practice. Another dimension is the International Nursing Pledge. This pledge affirms the values and ethical practices of the profession. You pledge that all who seek your care will receive it, equally with dignity and with compassion, that you will maintain your competence, you will respect their confidences, and you will at all times respect their life and their well-being. For our APU graduates, the pinning ceremony also recognizes and acknowledges our foundation. We view nursing practice through a lens that re represents our Christian values, and this changes everything. It affirms our inherent belief that life is sacred and that we have the immense privilege of entering and serving in a profession that allows us the opportunity to bring the message of Christ to others. Not necessarily in words, but in our delivery of care in a competent and compassionate way. It is the underlying foundation and the third dimension of our pinning ceremony. So today we are filled with gratitude. Gratitude because we have accomplished, and you really have accomplished a very difficult task, and you have done so successfully. We are also filled with gratitude because of what we are being given today. Thankfulness and gratitude do not always rest on what we have achieved, but it also rests on what is possible. It rests in the reality of ceaseless opportunity and the existence of limitless challenges and the ever-abounding transitions of life that offer us innumerable new paths to explore. Today, you have been given possibilities. What God has provided in our journey is an abundance of possibilities of those you, whom you might choose to serve, of how we will make a difference in the life of someone else, of where we will choose to work, and what we choose to do. There is wisdom in realizing that God has unimaginable designs for each of us, ones we cannot even begin to fathom. His design for you today effectively integrates your education, your skills, your principles, your values, ethics, and morals. And this preparation breaks open for you possibilities in the future in a way that nothing else can and nothing else will. Our celebration today rests not only on what has been achieved, but on what God in his wisdom will open up for you in the future. It is my pleasure at this time to start our ceremony and to introduce our provost, Dr. Mark Stanton, who will also extend a welcome from our administration. Dr. Stanton. As the Chief Academic Officer of Azusa Pacific University, I simply want to say how proud we are of all of you who are graduating today. Our School of Nursing is a significant part of who we are as an institution dedicated to Christian higher education, to preparing individuals who will be difference makers in the world. And I know that each of you graduating today will be a difference maker in our world. So congratulations to each one of you. I'm also a psychologist, and so I was pleased to see the verse that was chosen for today's ceremony that's on the front of your program today. 
Uh, I also have a background in uh, studying biblical studies and have taken two years of Greek. So I'm going to read it to you, but take a little bit of liberty in the translation because it says, Therefore, my dear siblings, my dear sisters and brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's my experience as a psychologist that careers self-select for the kind of person who goes into them. There's something about nursing that attracted you to it. As Dr. Lesh was saying, there's that sense of caregiving that is so noteworthy in the discipline of nursing. But there's also that sense of what it takes to give the kind of care that you're called to give. And so when you read this verse, I think it unpacks that very well. It says, give yourselves fully. But when it says give, yourself, give yourselves fully, what it's using is a term that is the Greek word ergo, from which we get energy. So my experience, and I've worked with a lot of nurses as a consultant in hospitals, is that most nurses have an engine inside of them that's always running. You know, it compels them to go and do things, to get things done and to accomplish things. And they tend to be driven toward things. And this verse, I think, is very suiting. It's very fitting for that because it speaks to the energetic engagement in work, to the diligence, to the above and beyond kind of capacity, the activity that's involved in your discipline of nursing. And so I think it's fitting that it's used for your ceremony today. But your work is work unto the Lord. One of the things that you'll find, of course, during your career is that you work for a lot of people. You have a lot of bosses as a nurse, right? You have a lot of people that you ultimately report to. You may have a nurse manager in your unit. You may have a director over your unit, or you may have an executive director or a vice president of nursing in the hospital or in the clinic in which you work. But ultimately, this verse reminds you that you work for the Lord, and it gets to that sense of calling that you have. For me, I think calling is a critical element of life. You felt called to do your studies. You felt called to go into this work. And it is that sense of calling that will help you when you may be frustrated, if I can just say, with your nurse manager, with the person you report to, because that will come. But in those moments, remember that you work for the Lord. And the work you do for patients and for others is really work unto the Lord. And when you do it that way, as the verse says, it's not in vain. That is, it's not empty. It's not meaningless. It has deep meaning. One of the things that I'm proud of as an academic at Azusa Pacific, and I say this, I don't have exact evidence, but I'm pretty certain it's true. I don't think you can go into a hospital in Southern California and not find an APU nurse, right? You're everywhere. And you're joining many of your colleagues-to-be who are alums of this institution. As Aya said, those people who are pictured on the wall in the School of Nursing and at our regional campuses. And you will join them in doing meaningful work that makes a difference in the world. And we're proud of you and what you do and what you will do as an alum of Azusa Pacific University. Congratulations today. I'm Assistant Professor Karen Scheid from the High Desert. Thank you. We will open in prayer if you'll bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for today. We are humbled. We're humbled by what you've accomplished in our lives, by those who provide for us, by those who we love, by the everyday provision of the things that we need, one step at a time. Lord, we place these precious students that we have worked with in your hands as they step forward in a new 
avenue of their lives. We ask that you lift them up on those eagles' wings as they leave our nest and as they begin in this beautiful practice of the profession of nursing that we have elected to pursue. Lord, you know that we work with the minds of our patients, the hearts of our patients, and with their souls and their health, and that those unmeasurable, unseeable pieces are so much of what we have learned and what we practice under the institution of APU, as well as we will carry in our hearts as we work with patients in many settings. Lord, we are just empowered as we are thankful for what you've accomplished. We, Lord, we also ask your blessing on all those family members here today who have suffered, who have sacrificed, who have given and supported these students in their journey. We are so thankful for friends and family who are there for us when we need them. And we just um, rejoice with them as they leave today and as they step into the next phase and support their family members. Lord, we, we just close with saying that we give you all the glory forever and ever, for endless ages. We have salvation through Jesus Christ that gives us the opportunity to practice our faith in any place that we might be. The glory be to God, who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we could ever dare to ask or dream. In Jesus' name. Amen. Forgot. <laughs> um, Ali Al Nasari and Jennifer Zinneman, will our pinning coordinators, will now give an address to the students as a welcome. As a student. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ali. And I'm Jen. And we are from uh, ELM Students Monrovia Campus. And, and we are here to welcome you to the Summer 2018 School of Nursing Pinning Ceremony. Today, we are speaking on behalf of the Entry Level Master's Program, LVN to BSN, RN to BSN, 2 plus 2, and the traditional undergraduate BSN program. First and foremost, we sincerely thank the individuals who made today possible. Thank you to the President John Wallace, whose presence is missed today, and to the Provost, Mr. Mark Staten, whose excellent leadership and dedication to our university and community have always encouraged us to utilize and integrate our faith into our practice whenever possible. Thank you to the faculty and staff whose perseverance understanding and comparison for us as students have helped us achieve great accomplishment as today. Your never-ending support and, and encouragement are the essential factors that fostered our success and ability to complete each of the program represented here today. Also, and most importantly, we are grateful to our significant others, family members, and friends for ignoring numerous small downs crazy round billings, and severe lack of presence and attention to their lives and needs. We are incredibly thankful and forever indebted to each of you for your unwearing love and underserved understanding and patience throughout this journey. We could not have done this without any of you. And to our fellow graduates and all here today, Jennifer will present the following verse. Um, so we heard the verse already today, Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves entirety, entirely to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Um, this verse represents the importance of our faith as a motivation behind our ever-present perseverance, strength, and compassion within our nursing practice. And... Um, and how strong our faith and belief in God is and led us to this path he has laid before us. 
for perseverance, represented in the verse, is in our caring and our advocating for our patients and their needs, returning each day for a new shift, no matter how long or tiring the previous one has been. It's also perseverance in the constant adherence to advancing nursing as a profession and embracing the continuous growth that comes with such a vacation. Strength is embedded not only in supporting clients and their families through their illness and pain, but is also in helping our peers during their darkest moments and challenging times. Compassion is in all that we offer to our patients, their families, their friends, our peers, our loved ones, and also conveying and illuminating our God-given gift of doing his work through nursing every single day. Remember to hold tightly to your faith in the Lord and believe that earning the gift of becoming a nurse is a reflection of what God is, and it reflects some of his unique characteristics, such as strength, compassion, and perseverance through us in our work, always. To all of us who have spent countless hours, sleepless nights, constant test anxiety, missed birthdays, anniversaries, and other important events. We have done it, and congratulations, class of 2018. We did it. Thank you. It's our pleasure to be able to uh, present the School of Nursing Excellence Awards at this time. As mentioned today, we're honoring baccalaureate students from the high desert, ELM students from Monrovia, San Diego, and the Inland Empire campuses, and our LVN to BSN Monrovia students, as well as RN to BSN online cohort. The recipients of these awards, will you please come up to the platform and receive your award when your name is called, and then be seated after receiving your award. We ask that you hold your applause till after everyone in that category has been named so that we can hear the names well. The first award is for academic excellence. This award goes to the student with the highest cumulative GPA in the BSN graduate cohort. So the first baccalaureate recipient from High Desert with a GPA of 3.9, Jessica O'Brien. ELM Monrovia Cohort 71, GPA, this is a three-way tie, 4.0 GPAs, Kelly Chow, Tanya Gal-Yin, and Megan York. ELM San Diego, Cohort 72, GPA 4.0, again a tie, this time two ways, Brianna Torek and Tony Vasquez. ELM Inland Empire, Cohort 73, GPA 3.947, Andrea Rejos. Now let's applaud everybody. The clinical award includes the criteria of outstanding clinical practice and skills, demonstrating exceptional professional care for patients, making good decisions based solidly on theory, incorporating the desires and needs of the client, while maintaining a strong GPA of 3.0 or above. The recipient is an enthusiastic learner who maintains a positive attitude, interacts well with professional staff, and maintains personal, physical, emotional, and spiritual health. The recipients for Baccalaureate High Desert, Rachel Dixon. ELM Monrovia, Cohort 71, William Walters. ELM San Diego, Cohort 72, Natalie Beatty. ELM Inland Empire, Cohort 73, Andrea Alessia. Our 
Faculty Award. Oh, let's, let's applaud for all of them. Our Faculty Award criteria are maintains excellent academic record, cumulative GPA of 3.0 or above, identified by faculty as excellent in clinical practice and skills, demonstrates leadership quality with peers and professionals, offers service and leadership to out ongoing programs and organizations in the School of Nursing or the University at large, and demonstrates professional writing ability. Baccalaureate High Desert recipient is Richard Mendez. ELM Monrovia, Cohort 71, Kira Looney. ELM San Diego, seven, uh, Cohort 72, Alex Morgan. ELM Inland Empire, Cohort 73, Caitlin Nguyen. The Outstanding Senior Award is presented by the university and chosen by faculty. The criteria are cumulative GPA above 3.0, demonstrating leadership at university level and in the School of Nursing University Service, SNAP officer or an active member of ASB, student representative at a level team meetings or SON committee, Sigma Theta Cha, exceptional projects for networking with diverse populations that were a minorities or underserved. And on behalf of the APU and School of Nursing, we are proud to present the Senior Recognition Award, Baccalaureate High Desert, Crystal Van Fossen, ELM Monrovia Cohort 71, Robert McDaniels, ELM San Diego Cohort 72, Madison Eshu, ELM Inland Empire, Cohort 73, Joshua Drew. For the RN and to BSN and LVN to BSN, there is an Academic Excellence Award that goes to the student with the highest cumulative GPA. The recipients are GPA of 3.918, Mary June Fernandez, Cohort 28. The criteria for the faculty award in the RN to BSN program and the LVN to BSN program also includes demonstration of strong skills in clinical practice, self-directed in goal setting, interacting well with peers and instructor, enthusiastic learner maintaining a positive attitude even while fulfilling multiple roads, roles such as student, nurse, friend, spouse, and parent, and is supportive of the instructor's role as facilitator in the course. Recipient of the, this award, this faculty award, is Teresa Moses, cohort 28, and Sarah Mikado, cohort 10. The Inspirational Award is given to the outstanding student in the RN to BSN cohort, or LVN to BSN cohort, who has demonstrated scholarship, made numerous contributions in the classroom, activities and discussions, supported fellow classmates, and demonstrated leadership in the classroom and throughout the program. The recipient of this award is determined by a vote of their peers as well as faculty input. The award goes to Aracela Lima, LVN, Cohort 10.
let's uh, again applaud all of our recipients of our award. Tiffany, Tiffany Montez will now come to the platform to discuss Sigma Theta Tau. Hi, everyone. You may have noticed some of the faculty and students wearing purple and white honors cords around their necks. These honor cords represent membership within a prestigious nursing organization, Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society. Our mission is to provide leadership and scholarship in practice, education, and research with the intent to enhance the health of all people. We support the learning and professional development of our members who strive to improve nursing care worldwide. I am Tiffany Montez, president of Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing's chapter IOTA SIGPA, and it is my privilege to recognize those students who have been inducted into SIGMA. Will all the members of IOTA SIGMA please rise so we may recognize you. Thank you. You may be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Valerie Floyd Davis, and I'm the recruitment specialist for the School of Nursing here at Azusa Pacific University. And I have the distinct pleasure today, along with Captain Janet Wessels from the San Diego Regional Campus. Yes. <laughs> to present a Department of Defense approved challenge coin to our veteran, active, or reserve service members within our ranks here at the School of Nursing, along with a red, white, and blue honor cord. A challenge coin is a small coin or medallion bearing an organization's insignia or emblem carried by an organization's members. Traditionally, they are given to military members to prove membership when challenged and to enhance morale. In practice, challenge coins are normally presented by unit commanders in recognition of special achievement by a member of their unit. These are very, very prized possessions of any military member, also dating back to the Roman Empire. At this time, could the following students please come to the stage? Leonard Labrette from the LVN to BSN program, Monrovia. Victoria Garcia from the BSN undergraduate transfer program, High Desert. Julian Johnson from the BSN Undergraduate Transfer Program, High Desert. Melvin Holland, Jr. from the Entry Level Master's Program, Monrovia. Michael Griffin from the Entry Level Master's Program, San Diego. Roger Soriano from the Entry Level Master's Program, San Diego. And Gabriel Gamboa is not here with us today. He is studying abroad, but let's still give him a round of applause. <laughs> Sergeant Leonard Labret served four years of active duty service in the United States Marine Corps and 10 years in the United States Army. He served in Okinawa, Japan, Germany, and at Fort Riley with the 3rd Battalion, 12th Marines, and Armored Regiment 1st Infantry Division, with two deployments to Mosul, Iraq, conducting security checks. Sergeant Labret, on behalf of Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing and the United States military, we thank you for your service and your selfless sacrifice to our country. Thank you, thank you. Staff Sergeant Victoria Garcia served eight years in the United States Air Force at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas as an aerospace medical service technician, surgical intensive care flight 
59th Surgical Inpatient Squadron and 59th Inpatient Operations Group and 59th Medical Wing deployed during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Staff Sergeant Garcia, on behalf of Azusa Pacific University's School of Nursing and the United States Military, we thank you for your service and your selfless excuse me, selfless sacrifice to our country. Thank you. <laughs> Petty Officer Third Class. Sorry. <laughs> no, me. Julian Johnson served eight years in the United States Navy as a hospital corpsman assigned with the Fleet Marine Force, which is a very specialized Marine Force, and the Marine Logistics Group and the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center at 29 Palms. Petty Officer Johnson. On behalf of Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing and the military, we thank you so much for your selfless sacrifice and your service to our country. Thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Melvin Holland, Jr. Served 25 years as a member of the United States Army Special Operations Command as a civils, civil affairs and psychological operations officer. Lieutenant Colonel Holland did three combat tours in Iraq and Afghanistan with the 3rd Infantry Division, the 1st Armored Division, the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force, and the Provincial Reconstruction Team, FARA. Lieutenant Colonel Holland. It is my pleasure to thank you on behalf of Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing for your selfless sacrifice and service to our country. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Sergeant Michael Griffin served in the U.S. Army National Guard nine years total in the Army and four years serving in the infantry and five years as a medic with two combat deployments to Afghanistan with the 2nd Infantry Division. Sergeant Griffin, on behalf of Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing and the United States Military, we thank you for your service and your selfless sacrifice to our country. Thank you. Sergeant Roger Soriano <laughs> served 22 years in the Army, 10 years active and 6 years with the Hawaii National Guard and who is still serving in the reserves as a medic and a pharmacy technician with one deployment to Kuwait. Sergeant Soriano, on behalf of Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing, and the United States military, we thank you for your service and your selfless sacrifice to our country. Thank you. And Gabriel Gamboa, out of honor, although he's not here, I still wanted to read his bio. Petty Officer Gabriel Gamboa served with the United States Navy as a hospital corpsman, Petty Officer Third Class attached to the Marine Corps specializing in detainee care. Gabriel, when you hear this recording, on behalf of Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing and the United States Military, we thank you for your service and your selfless sacrifice to our country. Thank you. My name is Katherine Tong. I'm the chair of the RN to BSN program, and it is my honor 
to introduce your speaker, Dr. Lori Salal. So, Dr. Salal has been married for 23 years. Her husband is an internal medicine doctor in his own private practice in downtown Los Angeles. She has two children, Olivia, who will be a freshman this fall at University of California, Riverside, studying microbiology, and Evan, who is a sophomore at Maranatha High School. She also has three little dogs who drive her crazy, but she loves them. Dr. Lori Salau has a background in neonatal nursing and has been a board certified neonatal nurse practitioner since 1994. Having earned a PhD in education with a focus in nursing, she is committed to the advancement of nursing education. Her goal is to improve how nurses teach and to foster student learning. Her goal is to, um, excuse me, Lori's doctoral work focused on improving the mentoring process for new educators and linking clinical adjunct faculty strongly to the Parent Academic Center. Dr. Salau has taught for APU since 2007 as an adjunct faculty member, and then she became a full-time assistant professor in 2015. She currently serves as assistant chair for the RN to BSN program. Her favorite classes to teach are pathophysiology and nursing theory. Currently, Dr. Salau teaches in the RN to BSN program, teaching both pathophysiology and improving patient outcome courses. And she frequently taught for the LVN to BSN program, teaching professional concepts and theoretical frameworks for nursing as well as writing too. Teaching has become Dr. Lori Salal's passion and she is continually seeking new ways to improve learning for her students. Therefore, please join me in welcoming Dr. Lori Salal. Okay, now I can raise this just a little bit, <laughs> Dr. Tong. Um, wow, thank you so much for asking me to talk to you today. Um, it's always such an honor to be here. I get so excited at every pinning ceremony. I love seeing how much you all have grown in your baccalaureate nursing journey and the renewal of the nursing pledge and the graduation that follows. It's a proud mommy moment for me, uh, even though you're all adults here today. But I think I can confidently say that this is true for all of your faculty, that we all get excited about uh, celebrating commencement and a time of um, graduation where we celebrate your relationships that have been established and celebrate your success and all the time and energy that have been poured into guiding you into this moment. I want to especially say a huge welcome, not just to our students, but your families, your friends, and your supporters. To your families and friends, these students have worked extraordinarily hard to get here. And as family and friends, you have been a critical part of this journey by providing support, be it the t gift of time, extra sleep, food, coffee, coffee, more coffee, <laughs> transportation, maybe money, encouraging words, and love. As I look out at all of you, I get excited because we have more and more men coming into the nursing profession. And this is great because female nurses feel that this brings a certain balance to our uh, work. And I'm still surprised though at this day and age that we still get comments for our male nurses about why did you choose nursing instead of medicine? As a nurse, I know why you chose nursing and I'm thrilled that you did. Um, years ago, one of my male students was interacting with a family, and both parents were clearly talking quietly as the student began administering medication. Finally, the wife spoke up and said to the student, so how long have you been a male nurse? <laughs> Not missing a beat, the student replied, my entire nursing career. <laughs> so I want to welcome all of you as we celebrate today. 
I am known in my classes to tell stories. And because while the information may float away into the atmosphere, the story is usually remembered. So I have a fun little anecdote to share with all of you. My student was walking down the hall when she heard a monitor beeping fairly rapidly. Beep, 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 to about of a rate of 140 beats per minute. Now on the pediatric floor, this can be a normal rate and a normal sound. She dropped off some jello to the patient next door and entered back into the hallway where she heard the beeping from the same room. However, the beeping was slowing. Beep, 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 until it stopped. The student rushed into the room ready to call a code when she realized that the Price is Right television game show was on <laughs> and a contestant had been spinning the big wheel. The student has never wanted to watch that game again, that game show again. And for any of you going into the ICU, trust me, you will hear those monitors in your sleep. Not everyone should be a nurse. And you may be surprised to hear me say that. I often overhear people tell my students, so how much do you make as a nurse? I could be a nurse. And that sentence right there tells me that they are focused on the income potential only and they don't understand the amount of education, the grueling hours, the constant critical thinking, and intensive assessment and evaluation that goes into being a nurse. This is in addition to providing a caring environment, even when your patient is driving you crazy or the big spinning wheel almost sets off a chain reaction code blue. I didn't always want to be a nurse. When I was a child, I wanted to be an archeologist and I wanted to go dig in Egypt. King Tut was around in the 70s when it first made its appearance here in the United States. My secondary choice was to be a veterinarian. I had a lot of stuffed animals that had been in and out of my operating suite, requiring intricate brain surgery, eye surgery, and sometimes limb surgery. And I grew up in a household that had all kinds of animals, everything from hamsters, frogs, mice, and even snakes. And I hate snakes. I wanted to be an English teacher in high school, and that probably why explains why I like to teach our writing classes today. I have the best of both worlds. My upbringing was in a medical household, with my grandfather being an old-fashioned Southern family practice physician and my mom running his office. As I got closer to college, I began to think that nursing just might be what I wanted. And like Dr. Stanton said earlier, I'm not sure what that calling was. I don't know what that shift was or how it occurred, but there it was. I made a plan for my college career and I was going to be a nurse. I have to say that my grandpa wanted me to go into medical school, but when I finished my bachelor's degree and then began working as a nurse, he was very proud. The reality of all of this is that I've actually been sort of a get my ducks in a row and see what happens kind of person. And early on I knew that I wanted to get my master's degree before my real life got complicated. So when I finished my master's degree and became a neonatal nurse practitioner, my grandpa, the old country doctor, loved talking shop with me and was always amazed at how medicine was changing. When I first started my nursing career, I would have never imagined completing my PhD and standing here before you today. My grandmother outlived my grandfather by about eight years and she helped pay for my doctoral education, saying that grandpa would have done this for you. I will forever be grateful to them for all of the families that have helped contribute financially to these students' education, bless you and thank you. Your money has been well spent. There is no better investment than on an education. One of my favorite sayings is luck favors the prepared, and I personally believe that luck is actually divine intervention, but I fell into education completely by accident and have never turned back. Azusa Pacific University has been my home as an educator, and the doors that God has opened for me here are amazing. I am thrilled that you have chosen APU for your nursing education. You are meant to be here. The theme that has been chosen today for today's pinning is perseverance, strength, and compassion through faith and belief. A movie came out at the end of 2017 entitled The Greatest Showman. The movie is about a younger P.T. Barnum of the famed Barnum and Bailey Circus, and is loosely based on how the famous circus came to be. Spoiler alerts are coming here, but the movie's been out for about a year now, so it's fair game. <laughs> One of the things that struck me the most about this movie is how Barnum brought marginalized people together into a family and actually gave them jobs that they could earn money using their unique qualities. 
And while everyone feels outcast at some point in their lives, in this movie, society's outcasts are celebrated and given a place to belong. Halfway through the movie, though, the main character abandons his circus performers and his own family in favor of a beautiful, talented singer. It is at that moment of despair that the circus performers assume that their careers are most likely over, that they stand up for themselves and fight back against the local mobs who continue to torment them. The message of self-love and self-acceptance becomes the emotional heart of the film. Of course, in the movie, Barnum comes back to the circus after realizing where his passion truly resides and that he too belongs to a family. Perseverance, strength, and compassion through faith and belief. These performers believed in their newfound family despite the ridicule, cue, and prejudice that they faced. In reality, Barnum was a controversial person, and many will agree that his entertainment should not necessarily be emulated. However, Barnum was also a keen businessman. In 1880, Barnum wrote a book on the art of making money. In this book, he explained successful business tactics and strategies. One of his quotes from the book is, whatever you do, do it with all your might. He further stated, work at it, if necessary, if necessary, early and late, in season and out of season, not leaving a stone unturned and never deferring for a single hour that which can be done just as well now. This sounds vaguely familiar as the biblical text you have chosen is 1 Corinthians 15:58, which reads, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now that was written long, long, long before 1880, but how profound these words are. But to put this verse more into context, in this entire chapter, Paul speaks of how Christians will suffer, be punished, and persecuted, and be marginalized. He even talks about death, that we all will die, but death is not to be feared, because the promise that is made in this chapter is that death is only temporary. It is a short sleep before the second coming and resurrection. And Paul says clearly that there is no other system of religion that provides the hope of Christianity and dispels the gloom of death. His advice to stand firm, give yourself to the work of God, is the simple promise that Christian work, work that we as nurses carry out, will be rewarded in the end, no matter your station in life. As nursing students, you have suffered a lot. I probably won't go as far as to say that you've been persecuted, but you have suffered at the hands of your patients, some of them children, at the hands of family members who were not your patients, other nurses, doctors, other students, and cringe, even your faculty. We have pushed you, quizzed you, challenged you, and even frightened you, all in an effort to prepare you for what we consider the big wild world of nursing and to get you ready for your greatest professional reward, a nursing license and a career in providing care as well as a safe place for all of society and especially society's outcasts. Luckily here at APU, we have also praised you, encouraged you, comforted you, and most importantly, we have prayed for you and with you. Your success is our success and we rest in the knowledge that your time with us has been inclusive of God and that we hope we have helped you find the path that God has set before you. Our jobs as facilitators and guides to the procurement of knowledge have ended, and we send you forward to continue your lifelong learning process. Be strong as you move forward. Hold fast onto what you know to be true, and know that any work you do in the eyes of the Lord will never be in vain because his kingdom is built upon your service. Congratulations on this momentous occasion. Never give up, because even when no one else sees your work, God will. Well, we're at the important part now. <laughs> we're ready for pinning, the actual pinning of our deserving students. So please refer to the back of your program for information about the history and the significance of our pin to our profession of nursing. 
We will start with the baccalaureate high desert nursing. Faculty, please come to the stage and students, please approach. Julian Johnson. Rachel Dixon. Nicole Azaki. Chambray Williams. Crystal Van Fossen. Orlando Pedroza. Jessica O'Brien. Erisa. Devin Recton. Lisette Rubalcaba. Brandon L. Ahmed. Annie Ng. Richard Mendez. Patrice Marie Harmer. Kimberly Angelis. Lisette Gomez Corona. Taylor Dumka. <laughs> Jennifer Lively. Monrovia Cohort 71, please uh, uh, come faculty to the stage and students approach. Andrew John Taylor. Megan York. <laughs> Emmeline Sang. <laughs> Kelsey Wong. <laughs> Emily Chan. <laughs> Jennifer Athena Wakalopoulos. Mary Parisian. Elana Malcumian. Melvin Holland, Lieutenant Colonel. K. 
Kelly Chow. Will Winchester Walters. Yahira Ramirez. Robert McDaniels. Jennifer Zimmerman. Kira Looney. Tanya Galleon. Ali Al Mazri. ELM San Diego, cohort 72, faculty please approach, and students as well. Brianna Torok. Jean Shao. Natalie Faye Bedi, Tori Robin Vasquez, Tony, sorry. <laughs> Megan Morse, <laughs> Shannon Orr. Miriam Ajmal. <laughs> Paulina Bayo. <laughs> Vanessa Guerrero. <laughs> Madison Ishu. Catherine Dang. Leanne Garrels. Roger Soriano. Michael Griffin. Preetal Burke. Eskra Reese Cobra. Alec Morgan. Entry-level program, Inland Empire, cohort 73, faculty and students, please approach. Deborah Weaver.
Ababat Tasvar. Sandy Guadalupe Castaneos. Andrea Maria Alarcia. Caitlin Nguyen. Bopa Rov. Gabriella Valdivia. Iris Fat Tran. Sylvia Kim. Brianna Cooper. Danielle Stoyan. Floor Kadra. Raina Bowen. Andrea Reyes. Jessica Bradley. Kimberly Johnson. Tiffany Tu. Steven Pedroza. RN to BSN online cohort 26, faculty and students please approach. Teresa Veronica Moses. Mary Jane Fernandez. LVN to BSN, cohort 10, faculty and students, please approach.
Stacy Lee Alvarez. Arlene Maria Canta. Congratulations. Leonard Labretti. Ochoa. Kyra Deandra Barrow. <laughs> Gliza Marie Valdi Abella. Araceli Lima. Jervon Johnson. Elo Eloisa, Eloisa, and Legaspi. <laughs> Veronica Alvarez. A tradition of uh, having candle uh, a candle lighting, candle lighting portion of our pinning ceremony and so I'm going to ask uh, it's going to be a little bit different because we're in a different place graduates please stand leave your candles off for the moment and any RNs in the audience are uh, invited to come and we have a basket up here in the front for you to have a candle as well Will the choral group please come forward? represent light and so let's light our candles while the choral groups prepares our hearts. Students and nurses and our soon-to-be nurses, please follow along with me, or repeat after me, I should say. In the full knowledge of the obligations I am undertaking, I 
I promise to care for the sick with all of the skill and understanding I possess. without regard to race, creed, color, politics, or social status. Sparing no effort to preserve the quality of life. To alleviate suffering and to promote health. I will respect at all times the dignity and religious beliefs of the patients under my care. Holding in confidence all personal information entrusted to me and refraining from any action which might endanger life or health. I will endeavor to keep my professional knowledge and skill at the highest level. And to give loyal support and cooperation to all members of the healthcare team. I will do my utmost to honor the international code of ethics applied to nursing. and to uphold the integrity of the nurse. I am here to give the benediction, but I will first give a couple of instructions. Once I finish the prayer, nursing students and faculty will march out. We ask the rest of you to wait until they are out, and then the rest of you to leave fairly quickly. There are refreshments to be served in celebration on the plaza, but we need to clear the sanctuary as soon as possible. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus, we're so grateful that you are the God of celebration. Your celebration involved the cross. Thankfully, ours doesn't. 
but as we celebrate hard work and sacrifice culminating in this day of celebration, we say thank you. And I want to bless these students that they partner with you in all they do in nursing. May there not be one day of their career that they do it on their own, but may they do it with you in the strength, courage, and perseverance that you provide them. And so, may your love increase and abound in Christ Jesus, in whose name I pray, amen.